Hello everybody! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Mustard Saves and today I thought I'd share with you guys what I ate in a day to beat the summer heat. I am no stranger to being outside. Like I used to do marching band so like I know what summer is like but this summer? This sun? This sun is something different. So I've definitely been switching up what I've been eating during these super super hot summer days. I typically work late nights, but on this day, I was hoping I could actually leave the store before we closed. So I started my day by starting a pot of taktoritang in my slow cooker. It's a Korean braised chicken dish that typically has potato, carrots, and onion. But all I had was an onion and in an effort to get another vegetable in, I also used some celery. For the sauce, I used two tablespoons of Korean red pepper flakes. This big bag only costs about $6 in my area and I use it in all sorts of other cooking at home, especially homemade kimchi. Next up is about a tablespoon of sugar or other sweetener of your choice, about two tablespoons of rice vinegar or just regular if you have it, three tablespoons of soy sauce, and then two heaping spoonfuls of gochujang. This is a fermented sauce made with the same type of peppers as the pepper powder. And again, for those who are wondering, this jar also costs about $6 pre-tax at my local Asian grocery store, and it is used in a wide variety of Korean dishes, so you'll definitely be getting your money's worth out of it. And we'll actually see this again later in the video, but moving on. For your chicken, you'll want to use something bone in and skin on to get the maximum flavor payoff for this dish. And it just so happens that chicken legs or leg quarters also happen to be one of the cheapest cuts of meat you can get, so it works out really well if you're working on a budget like me. I then added about two bowls of water and tossed everything together. The chicken ended up letting off enough of its own liquid though, so I probably could have gotten away with adding only one bowl of water. I put that pot on low heat and then left it to do its thing while I got started on breakfast. I'm not super hungry in the morning, so I either don't eat breakfast or just have something light. And today was a light snack kind of morning, and shocker, I made avocado toast. Contrary to popular belief, I don't think avocado toast is actually that expensive. I know some people feel some type of way if you eat avocado toast and you're on a budget. I'm just going to put a little cost breakdown here on the screen of what this toast can cost in my area. Um, I really don't want to get into it, but basically, if you're bougie on a budget like I am, little indulgences like avocado toast are not the reason we have to add the budget part of our title. And that's really all I'm going to say about that. A little while later, when I started to want some real food, I still wanted something cold, but more filling than some toast. So we're jumping back on our little trip to Korea and I was in the mood for Korean cold noodles called pibim kuksu. To start, I fished out a piece of kimchi from my big jar and this poor little cutting board was in fact clean. It has simply been permanently stained red by all the kimchi I cut on it. And this is homemade kimchi like I mentioned earlier. I do make my own kimchi. You can either buy some from the store, or if you don't have any, that is totally optional for this. You'll just add extra vinegar later on. And I really need to get some, like, real kitchen scissors, but these are just a pair of scissors that are for my kitchen. Like, we don't cut anything else other than kitchen things, like packages and food. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. Once I had the kimchi in my smaller pieces, I then added in about a teaspoon of sugar, a tablespoon of soy sauce, rice vinegar, a few dashes of fish sauce, and then about like one and a half or two tablespoons of gochujang. This would have also been really great with some minced garlic, but I just couldn't bring myself to bring out the cutting board again, so I just skipped it. For my noodles, I made an oopsie at the Asian market. This dish is typically made with buckwheat noodles called somen, 
but I picked up a Japanese style buckwheat noodle called soba <laughs> instead. Both noodles are used in very similar ways, so everything will still be fine. I just thought it was funny to share. I've also seen a few people on Reddit say that they use rice noodles because they're cheaper in their area. I have no idea if that tip is an authentic life hack, but really this sauce would go good on just about anything you want. Back to the sauce. It's literally so hot outside that my tap water is rather lukewarm, so to cool the noodles off even more after rinsing, you can either dunk them in a cold water bath or be lazy like me and just add ice directly to your bowl. And yes, these noodles are quite delicate, so I am using my hands to mix them together. And to serve, I just serve them with a side of pickled radish. And once I finish that up, I headed out the door to go to work. Upon my arrival home, a snack was much needed to settle down. I grabbed a mango from the fridge, tossed in some peach ring candies, and then topped everything off with some chamoy and tahin. I actually used to like not really be a fan of chamoy or tahin. I didn't think it was like bad tasting, it just wasn't my favorite thing to put on things. But my boyfriend like loves this stuff and I've actually developed quite the taste for it. And before we get our soup reveal, I wanted to add one more quick side. I made up a little spinach stir fry with lots of garlic and a little bit of soy sauce. I should have cut the spinach up a bit smaller and dried it off better because it came out a bit chewy and I had too much liquid left in the pan, but it was still nice to have something green. And finally, our stew reveal. We kept the pot on low for about seven hours, and on my way home from work, I gave my boyfriend a call and asked him to start a fresh pot of rice in the rice cooker so that I could assemble the beautiful spread you see here. For how low effort everything was, I think this was one of my most favorite things that I made this week by far. As a little side bonus, I just wanted to show you guys this little clip of some Frito pie. If you've never heard of Frito pie before, you basically just take corn chips and top them with nacho cheese and chili. And it took me a solid two minutes to put everything together because all I had to do was open some canned chili and a can of cheese and pop them in the microwave. You're certainly welcome to jazz it up with any of the same toppings you'd put on nachos. I just needed something really quick to put together and turning on the microwave for two minutes does like nothing to heat up the house. So that was another life-saving meal. Don't forget your microwaves, guys. And that's it for today's video, you guys. I hope this was helpful in giving you some ideas on how to expand your recipe repertoire to not only beat the heat during these trying times, but also to bring a little bit more worldwide variety to your day-to-day. -day. And I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments about any other things that you guys have been making to beat the summer heat as well. As always, if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!